Hello, I'm Bob Challoner, the President and CEO of Southampton Hospital, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Focus on Southampton Hospital, your monthly television program about the events, people, and programs at your community hospital. For this month's episode, we have a very interesting program about the development of a brand new service here at the hospital and the development of a new facility, which we are currently planning. It's our Phillips Family Cancer Center, which will be located out on County Road 39 near the junction of Route 27. Um, a brand new facility, very needed in our community, that will be providing state-of-the-art radiation oncology services as well as hematology oncology services. And to talk about the program and the facility, I've invited two very special people in. Um, one is our board chairman, Kenneth Wright, and the second is our architect, Blaze McCoy. Um, both have a lot to talk about, both the, the building we're building and also their experiences and why they've gotten involved with the, with the hospital and this particular program, which I think is an interesting uh, story as well. So I'd like to welcome both of you uh, for joining me today. And, and uh, Ken, I'd like to start off with you. And I think, um, first of all, you are the chairman of the board of directors at the hospital. and just. Uh, Tell us a little bit about yourself, actually, and uh, why you got involved with the hospital. And you have an interesting fact, also. So, <laughs> uh, I was born in the hospital. Right. My children were born in the hospital, right. and my father was uh, a surgeon here at Southampton That's Hospital. Right. Uh, so I have a long uh, family history with the hospital. Right. Uh, being a local resident, I'm uh, very interested in supporting it and supporting the community. And a uh, longtime advocate of the hospital, I know. And I think you're our first board chairman ever actually born in the hospital. <laughs> right. So I think that's a very, uh, very uh, important uh, distinction. Um, and I would, I would call you one of our uh, proud alumni. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> of our, um, exactly. And Blaze, also a little bit about yourself. You've been in the community for a while now. You have your own architectural firm. Um, I, my wife, Tracy, and I moved out here in 2001. Um, I've been practicing since 1985. Uh, we live in Sac Harbor. She, um, Tracy runs the Bay Street Theater, and so we're pretty rooted in the community as well. Great. Well, thank you. And we'll talk a little bit about how, how you gotten involved. And uh, I know that Ken made the introduction for us. Um, and it was important that we had somebody involved who had a sense, a local sensibility about our buildings and programs and what's important to this community with it. And maybe, Ken, I'll start off with you. Can you just talk a little bit about um, why you think a cancer center is important to this community? Sure. Um, uh, <coughs> all of us, uh, when we've gotten to, or any of us who've gotten to my age, know people either firsthand, or friends and or family, who have uh, been treated for cancer. And uh, today, uh, people requiring uh, radiation or oncology treatment, or radiation treatment specifically, need to travel either to Riverhead, Comac, or even New York City to receive their treatment. Right. Oftentimes, that's a daily regimen for six weeks, and uh, it uh, damages your body, and it's very uh, tiring. And uh, so to have a facility uh, closer to home is uh, an important thing for our community. We know through uh, state statistics that in our service area, uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 600 people a year uh, require the services uh, that this uh, center will provide. And so... Uh, that's just from the South Fork. That's just from the that's South right. Fork of Long Island, that's right. right. So uh, being able to provide both radiation and uh, uh, oncology uh, uh, treatment locally will be a big uh, plus for the community. And I know myself that I hear from people frequently, why can't we provide this service? Um, and uh, uh, particularly the further east you go, we've, we've heard of incidences of people in Montauk and East Hampton actually avoiding getting radiation just because they couldn't deal with the thought of traveling these distances. And unfortunately, avoiding health care is usually not the best way to deal with it. Right. Um, and, you know, one of the questions that's been asked to me in the past is, um, so what's it take for a cancer center? And a major piece of equipment is a linear accelerator. Um, uh, can you talk about that a little bit, Ken? Sure. Uh, we're uh, planning on a Varian True Beam a linear accelerator. Right. Uh, we've chosen, uh, this is a state-of-the-art uh, machine, brand new, 
Uh, we've chosen it in collaboration with the radiation oncology team at Stony Brook University to uh, mimic uh, and complement uh, the state-of-the-art uh, program that they have at Stony Brook University Hospital. Right. Uh, so this will be a, uh, uh, a very versatile uh, machine, uh, absolutely uh, state-of-the-art. And a question that's been asked for me in the past, and uh, why can't we, do, why is it taking so long for us to be able to do something like this? I mean, one, clearly there's a cost implication to it, but the construction of a facility to do radiation, um, uh, I guess either one of you, if you could comment, I know we have some special requirements about building this um, uh, facility for the radiation particularly. It's not the average building that we're putting up over there. It's, it's not the average building and getting approval for it is not the average approval process either. That, that's right. And uh, so we've been very fortunate to uh, get a, a large grant. Uh, this facility will cost, uh, fully equipped, will cost about twenty million dollars and we've gotten a grant for just about half of that from the Phillips Family Trust uh, and uh, putting together all of the pieces, the property, uh, the design, uh, the approvals, and we're very close to breaking ground. And uh, so, but it has taken a while, obviously, to put all those pieces together. Absolutely, and the location, um, not on the hospital grounds. Why is that, Ken? Well, uh, <clears throat> Hospitals are wonderful things, but uh, you don't necessarily want to be in them if you don't have to be. And uh, if you're going daily for either radiation or oncology treatment, uh, a, a, uh, there are settings more pleasant than hospitals, let me put it that way. Right. And uh, we hope, uh, well, we know that this is going to be a beautiful, wonderful setting for receiving daily treatments uh, for cancer patients. Yeah, and I wanted to springboard off of that a little with um with uh, you, Blaze, um, the design of the building is a little bit um, different and um, non-institutional. Non-institutional, and maybe. And I know that Ken, you, I credit you. You've been very involved. You've wanted to build a facility that really would be non-institutional, and it's one of the reasons why we got Blaze involved. And um, and maybe you could talk a little bit about just the design look and feel of it and your inspiration for sure. it. Sure. Um, you know, we wanted to, we needed to do something that was economical. And <clears throat> when we first met with Ken, we talked about the um, the economy of doing a simple form. And the building is really one long rectangle. Right. Um, inspirationally, it came from the history of the potato barn out here. It was one when we first moved out here. Uh, my first office was in one. And um, they tend to be these beautiful agrarian buildings, sort of partially, uh, I guess, buried in the ground. Um, and um, we thought we didn't want the building to look like an institutional building. Right. Uh, we, wanted some, we wanted people to feel surprised when they arrived. Um, and we surprised in a good way. In a good, <laughs> in a good way. Exactly. That they weren't, to Ken's right. point, they weren't right. arriving at a hospital building. Right. They were arriving at something that was pleasant, uh, both from the the physical, you know, form of the building, but also the grounds. We worked. We've been working with uh, Chris LaGuardia's office, the landscape right. architect. Here, also a local firm. Also right. a local yeah, firm right. to uh, really develop the landscape and a uh, contemplative garden. Right. Um, we um, have also been conscious of the time spent with treatment right. and we wanted that space to be very special um, and it's a you know it's a v tall vaulted space with views out to the garden um, we've incorporated louver wood louvers at both ends of the glass ends of the building so that that can allow light to bounce in without being glary so that the, the building is bright inside with natural light but not sh sharp right. um, we just wanted, we wanted people to feel comfortable when they came in, as much as they possibly could, given the circumstances. Potato Barn, I think, when I first moved out here about 10 years ago, I noticed these buildings that were sort of half in the, half in the ground. I think your office is a Potato Barn, My isn't it, your it company, is, Ken? It is, yes. Yeah. Um, can you just, a little digression, but just what is the history of a Potato Barn? Why are they built like that? Well, they're oftentimes built in uh, areas that have a, a, a grade change over them, as this property yes, does, right. and uh, so that they weren't particularly suitable for farming. Right. They were, th this property was owned by farmers, 
And the potatoes store best if they're sta stored at sort of ground temperature and an into the earth, earth building will stabilize in the, in the mid 50 degree range. And that was just an ideal uh, temperature for storing potatoes. So they could have a two level barn with potato storage on the, on the ground floor and then equipment storage on the upper floor accessed at the opposite end. So it took advantage of... Uh, with natural cold storage. With natural cool storage, natural yes. cold. In, yeah. in our yeah. case, with the um, radiation unit, which needs to be shielded, that's going to be... It helped, because in we the were ground, able to right? bury most of that into the, into the ground and use the ground as sort of a buffer right. to uh, kind of lessen the need for additional shielding, you know, at the bottom sides and top of that, that piece. Right. And it's a... Um, it's kind of an interesting take on an old style of architecture being used for very new technology. It, right, seems, to, right. it seems to come together for us, which I'm very, very pleased with. Um, challenges from your perspective, architecturally, trying to design around, uh, design a program like this? Well, uh, I did healthcare work years and years right. ago before moving out here. Um, and typically that process is very different than what we're doing now in, in that the program drives the form, and then you're sort of skinning the form or wrapping the form. Uh, so in this sense, the challenge was to kind of make that form simple and not kind of move around all over the place due to one more office, one more you know, uh, storage room, one more whatever. Right. So and, um, I think that was certainly one challenge and negotiating the site was really a big challenge because there's a, a one-story drop-off along the broad side of the building so from the street side you enter at the lower level and there's a double height lobby space that is also entered from the back side of the property at the second level okay so getting all of that program to sort of stretch along that grade change allow driveways to work up and down so right. that people aren't you know, going up and down steep hills, right. parking on those slopes, getting people to the door in as easy a way as possible. Um, it was a tough sight. <laughs> so, um, I mean, what will work for it is people will either be going in for the, the chemotherapy or the medical oncology, or, and they'll be entering on two different levels. Right not having to take stairs ideally they can enter exactly uh, you know and we don't like stairs typically in healthcare with sick people exactly. it's always a challenge for folks and Ken just your own personal thoughts on the inspiration for it and uh, I you were very passionate when this project started to become live at the hospital on uh, on, on designing something a little bit different. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about that. Well, this is, um, we're building this along County Road 39, right. which is not known for its uh, beautiful architecture. No. And uh, the last it's thing I want a variety of architecture. <laughs> right. right. Road 39. Yeah. I mean, there are some fine yeah. buildings yeah, on that fine. strip, right. and there are some buildings that are less fine. Right. And um, uh, this is uh, something for people who are ill to go get treatment, and the last thing we want is for them to go into um, a, 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 a poorly designed, uh, unattractive uh, building. Right. And uh, so I just couldn't be more pleased that I think we've got something very special and I think this is going to be um, as, uh, as an attractive uh, uh, facility for uh, people who need this sort of treatment as there could be. And one of the other things that's worked out with this site in particular that's interesting is, uh, well, there's a couple things that are interesting about the site, but one is there's some other medical offices and things nearby. Can you just mention that? And well, sure. There's, uh, there's the uh, OBGYN group right. that we will sort of back up to, so to speak, and have uh, common uh, access to our parking areas. Right. Uh, then next to that is the Stony Brook uh, uh, Cardiology Group. Right. Uh, and next to that is, uh, what's next Orthopedic to that? Orthopedic and plastic <laughs> surgery, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yes, yes. So, uh, and all of these uh, offices have interconnected parking areas, so uh, uh, referrals from one can visit the other without, uh, without having to go out onto the street. Which makes for a nice, nice synergy having everything That's right. located, and That's right. uh, and gives us a couple of ways to access all of the properties right. over there, which I think will will be terrific. Mm -hmm. um, Blaze, the two the two programs. Can you just break those down a little bit? The two different floors and uh, how those will be um, 
different, maybe? What, what's going on on those two floors and maybe well, the, how they'll look and feel different? Sure. On the, I mean, on the lower floor, the, um, you know, I think the, the challenge and, the, ac and the, the point of the lower floor is access to the linear accelerator. So um, the, the, that's the main entry lobby. It's the waiting space. Um, there's office spaces down there as well, doctor's offices. Um, and then just trying to get that um, patient experience from the front door to the LINAC to be a pleasant experience where they're, they're seeing daylight, uh, they're seeing garden space, they're not you know, in the bowels of a building or not feeling like they are. Right. Uh, whereas on the second floor, um, there's an uh, uh, assembly space uh, for classrooms and uh, teaching, but there's also uh, the infusion space is a, a vaulted you know, story and a half um, room that uh, at one end is all, is all glass with these louvers that kind of le bring in filtered light. Um, it's higher um, because of the grade change. You're really, for the most part, above parking by one story. So we worked with Chris's office so that tre you're kind of in the trees. And, right. and the openings for large openings for windows, it's not like little tiny openings or big walls of glass that look out over trees, in the trees, instead of, you know, headlights and taillights and, right. and sidewalks and things like that. Right. Which I have to say, given, you know, people struggling with cancer, um, pretty frightening time in people's lives. So to create that, um, that atmosphere as much as possible is just no uh, question. is really, really important. And I know it's been important to everybody involved in the development of it. Cancer. Cancer treatment is not just about the medication and radiation, it's about a lot of other supportive services also. These are people need help navigating. Um, we currently in our breast center have a patient navigation service, a um, woman named Susie Roden who helps people arrange even things for like child care while they're getting treatment, um, other social services. So clearly having those available online or in the building will be important. Counseling also, I mean, cancer is a tough, tough disease um, with very uncertain outcomes and just providing that, that, that counseling and then having education and family support space is going to be, will be vital to us. Um, I do know that um, the, uh, the, the flexible use of that classroom space will be, will be vital to us as well. Plus we're doing teaching. I mean, as we work with Stony Brook, we'll be teaching residents uh, and other folks. And we're very happy that the folks at Fighting Chance will be joining us with a satellite office there as well. Fighting Chance is a cancer support group out here in the East End. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to ask you, you mentioned, Ken, there's a long, long uh, regulatory process. And where do we stand at this point? Well, we're sort of 98 percent uh, of the way through that regulatory process. Right. Uh, we've gotten approvals from the Department of for the Suffolk County Department of Health Services. Uh, from uh, the Suffolk County Water Authority, from the Southampton Village Planning Board, from the Southampton Village Architectural Review Board. Uh, we are uh, all, virtually all the way through the New York State Department of Health with a certificate of need. Uh, and, um, and our drawings are in at the Southampton Village Building Department. So we will really be in a position to uh, start construction uh, very soon. We're beginning uh, the process of selecting a, a general contractor for the job, uh, and I think we could break ground uh, certainly this fall. I was going to ask you that. When do you think the groundbreaking? Well, I would I mean, certainly this fall yeah. uh, uh, be able to break ground, and uh, it should be about a one-year duration. So I'd hope we'd open by the end of uh, uh, 2017. Okay. What do you think the biggest complications are, either one of you, in terms of building the building? The biggest, uh, not complications, but the most difficult parts of building this building I think will be? Any hospital building, it's the things you don't see. Right. You know, plumbing, heating, electrical, technology, all the stuff that's behind the walls and the ceilings, you know, that's, that to me is probably on this building the most complicated element. <laughs> The, 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 right. the building is being designed as if it's a part of the hospital. It's right. meeting all the standards that the hospital has to meet for, uh, since the hospital, it will be, in fact, a, a branch of the hospital, right. and, and the hospital will operate it. Uh, so this is not a medical office space that we're renting to doctors. Uh, and the, uh, the requirements for uh, what are called Article 28 facilities are very stringent. 
and uh, that adds a, a level of complexity to the building that uh, wouldn't that other buildings in the area don't have to uh, have. That's right. And yeah. Ken, you mentioned Stony Brook's involvement. Uh, Stony Brook, as most people know, is our uh, medical um, uh, tertiary hospital affiliate, also our teaching uh, our residency program sponsor. Um, and Southampton's developing a, a much tighter relationship over the next few months and will be joining formally with Stony Brook, but they've been involved in this planning, planning process, and can you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Samuel Ryu, uh, who's their uh, head of radiation oncology, uh, has been very closely involved with, in fact, it's, it's, this is in effect going to be a branch of his department. Right. Uh, they will uh, operate, they, we, will operate the radiation oncology group and uh, uh, we with our own oncologists will be operating the, uh, the medical oncology uh, unit. But uh, Stony Brook has been very involved with the layout, the uh, selection of equipment, uh, uh, so that it, it also has a, uh, a planning CT scanner. Uh, which and what's that do? Right? <coughs> yeah. That uh, locates a, a PET scanner can locate exactly where a tumor uh, is in, a, in the body and then record that information and, and feed it to the LINAC okay. so that the LINAC can deliver the radiation exactly where it needs to be uh, uh, delivered. Uh, two separate machines in two separate rooms, uh, one for planning and one for treatment. Yeah, clearly radiation is something you don't want to miss uh, when you're aiming the, the That's radiation. That's right. You yeah. want to use as little as you can and you don't want to waste it. You want to de deliver it exactly where it needs to be and nowhere else. Or as, and I would highlight that part of being involved with uh, Stony Brook with cancer, there's an opportunity to get involved with um, uh, uh, clinical trials and other um, research opportunities and certainly being attached to a larger academic medical enterprise uh, will we'll be able to take advantage of that. And the approach with Stony Brook overall has been that this is it's not a satellite, it'll be an integral part of their, their cancer services and programs. So, um. I, I think everyone recognizes that the best care is delivered by large teaching institutions, right. and this will, in effect, be a part of a large teaching institution. Absolutely. And I know that there's been some discussion, I've heard a few people say, you know, cancer, shouldn't I go into the city to Memorial Sloan Kettering? And um, at least my own perspective, and I know, Ken, you've thought about this from the board, is that uh, um, Yes, often people, and we certainly encourage people to go wherever they're most comfortable and where their doctor is most comfortable sending them. Um, but that often uh, after they've received that diagnosis and the treatment regimens and they need this ongoing care, which it's difficult to travel in and out of the city and there's no reason we can't partner with the hospitals in the city or doctors in the city to provide the radiation on an ongoing basis locally. Absolutely, and this machine will be as uh, uh, up-to-date as anything uh, at any other institution in New York City. Right, absolutely. So we're looking forward to certainly getting that online. And one other point I wanted to make was um, its location. Um, uh, and I think we did select this site specifically a little bit east of the hospital um, because we know how difficult it is people traveling from East Hampton, Montauk, right? Obviously, so. people coming from Montauk and East Hampton would have the longest drive to the next nearest site. Uh, and it could take a couple of hours each direction on a daily basis, which is uh, uh, just you'd certainly like to avoid at that time. Absolutely. You know, another aspect of it that I thought was interesting was the uh, landscaping. And typically in a hospital, we don't think much about landscaping. We worry about beds sure. and bedpans and toilets probably more than, and we're actually paying a fair amount of attention to this. And what's, what's the thinking behind that? And what do you, what do you think from a design well, to your, perspective? To your point, most, most projects like that it end up yeah. with uh, half a dozen trees of the smallest caliber, exactly. uh, you know, as a sort of as token, an afterthought, token usually, afterthought. Right. Um, but the landscape design was part of the um, architectural review board submission, submittal right. and review. Um, I think the, the village was certainly supportive of what uh, Chris was proposing. Um, and part of that came from, you know, the challenge of screening of making the building visible and easy to find, making wayfinding easy, right. but at the same time, uh, you know, uh, screening parking for 80 cars, give or take. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, uh, and then the other was, you know, we have this linear accelerator that is buried in the ground, but it's still taller than that first floor. Right. So it had created this odd bump right. in, in the ground that, as you know, we've been wrestling with for a number of months. Right. And so that uh, came an, became an idea about how to create almost like a, a Japanese garden. Um, and, that, and Chris's office has worked very hard at that. Um, and so when you're in the infusion room uh, space, you can look out on that and have something that's a focal point right. as opposed to just you know the, the minimal amount needed. And that natural, um, certainly seeing greenery, I've heard that greenery is, a, you know, staring at greenery is just relaxing. Very peaceful, and, right. right. And dealing with stress uh, and overcoming sort of the stress of, of folks. I think the other thing that's important to mention is not just the patients often who are there and that are in the facility, it's their family sure. and their caregivers and people accompanying them and providing them with a pleasant place to be. Is, and they is, may be there for hours as well. That's exactly right. So to provide them, provide them with that as well. And from your perspective, what is it you're most excited about in terms of the design of this? I mean, I'm excited that it, you know, it's a built, it's a, to me, it's a strong building. Right. You know, and we're, we're, our office is proud of the building. Right. Uh, there was, as after I had my first meeting with Ken when he broached the idea, um, you know, we, we're in a world here where we're designing for right. a certain segment uh, right. of residential client. Um, and so the opportunity to do something that really was for our community, All right. uh, you know, I mean, people were kind of elbowing each other out of the way to try to work on the project. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, probably aren't going to be too many of these built on the South Pole. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, you know, we, we've done, this will be our, I guess, second commercial project out here since we started the office. Right. Um, even though my background years and years ago was more of that. Right. There's just not that much that happens in commercial work or institutional work out here. Right. Um, so, but I, you know, I was thinking about, we did a tiny 1,200 square foot little project in Bridgehampton uh, on 27, right. six or seven years ago. And we've got more feedback and emails and calls about this little building that, that's a fraction of the size of most houses out here right. uh, because of people just where it's at. And this will be, you know, I think even more so. I mean, the scale of the building, the fact that everybody's driving by that, um, the fact that I think we're excited about how what, what a good building I think will be for the, you know, for that stretch of road. Wonderful. You know, maybe we'll drive things up a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it's, um, we're hoping it'll actually give us a chance to improve that stretch of road as well, actually. Yeah. Um, and um, somebody said to me, the Parish uh, Art Museum, which I think is a beautiful building, mm -hmm. is uh, Potato Barn inspired as well. That's sure. a similar kind of structure, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you, Ken? What are you most excited about with the project? <clears throat> I'm just excited to be able to provide this sort of service to our community. That's right. just wonderful to, uh, to leverage uh, our relationship with Stony Brook, uh, this wonderful uh, grant from the Phillips family, our local talent, and, uh, and come up with something that I, I just think will be a, a wonderful boon to our community. Wonderful. Well, thank you both, and we're out of time, but I really do appreciate the great work both of you are doing, making this, uh, bringing this to reality for the community and all the people we serve. And as an administrator, I would be remiss if I didn't say that while we have a very large grant, we are still taking <laughs> donations for this project as well. And, and anyone who is so motivated, the, the, the money they donate will certainly do very, very good work for a lot of people with this right. new facility. That's so. Right. Um, thank you both for being with me today and all the good work you're doing on this project. So. And I'd like to thank all of you for watching us this month. If you'd like to learn more about our um, new Phillips Family Cancer Center, which we will be breaking ground on in the fall, or if you'd like general help um, navigating the healthcare system out here on the East End, as always, please feel free to call my office at 631-726. 8555. As always, I'd like to thank our friends at CTV for producing this show and airing it in our Southampton communities and our friends at LTV in East Hampton for showing our program in East Hampton. Again, anyone, if you have any questions, concerns, ideas for future programs, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you, everyone, and good health. <laughs>